So today's video is going to be how to install a security light on the outside of your house. So I've already got an existing light on the outside of the house here, but I want to add an extra one on the wall down here. So the end of this alley is lit because at the moment we've only got light on this end. So what I'm going to do is cable from here pinned across the wall to a new light to go somewhere down at the end here. So we'll have a look in the CEF catalog. They tend to have a wider range of stock electrical stuff than the lights are screw fixed. And you're gonna need a whisker box to go on the outside of the house. One with two knockouts on one side so that we can take a cable for each of the lights. Then we're also gonna need some cleat. So I'm gonna cleat the cable rather than clip it because we're on pebble dash. So we need to be able to get screws in because it's quite uneven. Then you need to get some glands as well. So we'll find an appropriate floodlight, something like one of these. And that'll do the job. We've got our materials here, we've got floodlight, some um, 0.75mm flex, 10 meter cable, and then whisker boxes, compression glands, and then our cable cleats. I actually got two whisker boxes because I wasn't sure what the wiring for this would be, and I'll just take the other one back if I don't need it. When you mount these, you never really want to be going top entry. Ideally, you want to only be taking cables out of the bottom because if you've got the top, you get rain sat on it and eventually the rain is getting in there. Whereas in the bottom, you're always going to be fine. You preserve the IP rating. Common cause of circuits tripping in houses is when you get water in uh, exterior electrics in the top of these when people have top entry. Just not worth the risk. Always much better to go in the bottom. If you haven't seen one of these cable glands before, they work by, as you tighten, it compresses this EPDM seal inside. So it just reduces and squeezes onto your cable so you get a nice tight seal. Any electrical work in homes needs to be undertaken by competent persons and always consider whether you need a professional involved. Now, first job is to isolate the existing light outside. So my outdoor light is on this fuse spur here, which I will switch off. However, don't forget that a fuse spur is not a double pole switch which it only switches off the live. So the neutral on those cables outside will still be live. So I'm gonna go and turn off the relevant circuit. If you haven't already got a power source for an existing light outside, you're gonna to need to take a spur off a socket. So to find a socket on an external wall, then you need to add in a few spur, like the one I just showed you, and then drill through the wall, and then that takes your power outside. So just removing the existing whisker box and we'll be putting a new one on that's got two knockouts in the bottom. So we're going to need to stick a hole in this back of this box. Better got to work out quite where we put it so that, that cable fits in nicely. So I'm just using one of these cone bits. Much better at going into plastic boxes than anything else. And then I'm just going to go in one of the corners. quick hole with these and you don't get any blowout or breaking that you get if you try and use a spade bit and also if you need the hole to be slightly bigger it's very easy to do it. Okay that'll work nicely on there. What I'm going to do is get a chisel and knock off some of these bits of gravel so they can get a bit of a nicer flusher fit to the wall. It's very wonky at the moment and then we we'll use these two come out the bottom so one for the existing light, and then new one to go over to the new light. Much, much flatter to the wall. Right, so now I need to take out these two knockouts.
job that's also worth doing is taking a bit of sealer in the back of this the exterior sealant just to stop any water coming into this box so we've got the light here now it does come with a bit of flex on it which is the reason that i bought the other whisker box so i wasn't sure how this would terminate however it is possible that i'll be able to open this up and just re-terminate but we'll see now in terms of mounting this it's gonna be a lot easier to take the bracket off so just unscrew these screws here mount the bracket and then put the light back onto the bracket rather than trying to do it all at once even with a spanner haven't been able to undo this nut so you're gonna have to use the other whisker box to terminate this cable into there and then run another cable from the other whisker box so a bit more work than planned so we're just going to unscrew this just want to be careful to not lose any of these washers because there's a washer on either side so that well for the reason that you can tilt the light Now these whisker boxes actually come with these mounting brackets, so you mount that to the wall, push the box onto it, and that squeezes into the back, and locks it in. So I think I'm going to have a go at just mounting this only. Same as the other one, going to need to take out two knockouts, because you've got one for the light, and then one for the feed coming in. Fortunately I bought four glands, so we've got two more glands to go in the bottom. M20 and they just screw straight in. So on the whisker box, one of the great things about these is they're actually threaded. If you can see that there. So when you knock these out, you can just lose this end nut and then that just screws straight into there, which is pretty useful. So to match the light at that end, I'm gonna stick this whisker box at the same height above it, about here or so. And I'm gonna break off some of this gravel so it's flat. So got this got this whisper box up here, same height as the one down there, and light's all good to go. So now I just need to get the cable from here all the way to that one over there. Now in order to get it the same height the whole way, I'm gonna use this laser. It's very difficult to see in this light, but you can actually see it if you put your hand out and then see where it hits the wall. So I'm going to go the whole way across there, 
this is self-leveling so I know this is a level line going over and then what I'm going to do is just drill holes in this wall for cable cleats going the whole way along the laser was far too difficult to see in this light so I've decided that I'm going to use a bit of string line instead between two screws so I can get the rest of the screw holes in a straight line so I put the string from a screw there to a screw all the way over there So I've got the string line set up, which has worked surprisingly well. And now I'll just work my way across that, drilling holes. made the mistake of getting cable cleats that are actually a bit too big for this cable. Just picked the wrong size. I'm hoping that I can just pull the cable taut outside, but as you can see, it's difficult to clamp it down. Even with a tight screw, that's not gonna keep that. It's still gonna be moving back and forth. The other mistake I've made is not buying any exterior screws. So all I've got is these drywall screws, but Side of the house doesn't get much weather, so hopefully they'll be alright, and they're black. So cable is all in down the side, still not perfectly straight, but it does pull taut. And we'll just send that up into the box there. Again, I use these drywall screws, which isn't really ideal. So tighten that up now, so we're all in the box.
so I think we can call that job done. We'll come back tonight, see how it looks in the dark.